episode of Rachel Gaffney's Real Ireland from Dallas, Texas. Uh, when I was coming in this morning, it was so wet and miserable. It, it was, I thought I was at home actually, I thought it was in Ireland. It had that kind of dreary wet and that kind of grey sky and I shouldn't be saying that. It's not like that in Ireland all of the time. Just a lot of the time. <laughs> but sure, I tell people all the time, you know, if you go to Ireland for the weather, don't. Go to weather, go to Ireland because uh, you want to go to Ireland. If you get great weather, then that's a bonus. And if you don't, sure, then you won't be disappointed. You'll just have a great time. But um, in this week's episode, I wanted to mention to you that um, this is March the 13th. So we've got St. Patrick's Day coming off March the 17th. And as a special guest this week, um, we've got live from Ireland, um, the Managing Director of Dromolan Castle, uh, Mr. Mark Nolan, who I'm thrilled has agreed to, to be on our show today. And we'll have a chat with him about life inside Dromolan Castle and indeed maybe a little bit of life outside the castle and show you some a little video and some photographs. And if you have questions for us on the castle or for Mark, you can post them in the live feed or in Twitter at Rachel Gaffney. Um, and then you can find Dromolan Castle. But we'll, we'll answer hopefully all your questions and share some really n nice information on the castle with you. So that's coming up shortly. And Mark is ready in County Clare waiting to speak to you all. So we look forward to that. But I thought I would start with a little image that I captured on my iPhone this morning as it's St. Patrick's Day. And I was getting ready and in the background came up um, the Kathy Lee and Hoda show, which I love, don't get me wrong. And we got our little Irish segment for about two minutes and up came this and I just snapped a photograph because actually I was kind of green, but it was with anger. I thought, no, no, please, not again. So I don't know if we have that image that uh, the one of the background, they had, I think it was Kathy Lee and Hoda yes. asking some questions. Did you see that, Anna? Yeah, we do, we do have it on the stream right now. Oh, right. So the, wow. the photo is of... Um, a rainbow. Yeah, but it's a caricature, you know, that right. whole Irish thing as well. And this is exactly my point. Guys, even on the Today Show, I love you and I love NBC. And, and I, I know I'm trying to be trite here. I do like you guys, but this isn't fair. I am sick to death of this. I'm sick to death of... We have 365 days in the year. We've got 52 weeks. We get maybe a condensed week for St. Patrick's Day, and this is what we get. We get this caricature, we get drunk, we get green beer, we get cabbage, we get dying the rivers. Like I said on last week's show, not fair to all the people in Ireland who have been working so hard to raise the profile of Irish food, drink, education, travel, fashion, design, shall I go on? So that's what this show was about. It's about the Ireland I know, the Ireland I grew up on, the Ireland that my family still live in, the Ireland that I take my clients to visit, and the Ireland that uh, the people in Ireland would like everybody to know about. So, because uh, we don't make our living off caricatures of green beer and cabbage, it's, it's not fair anymore. And we don't do it to other cultures. We don't do it to the Italians. We certainly don't do it to the French with their food. So let's kind of get together everybody and let's support Ireland and their effort with food and drink. Anyway, moving on, that's my little gripe for the day over, but it's, it's, I think it's topical. And so this brings me into a little thing on, I don't know if you can see here in front of me, please God you can, I brought in a little table arrangement that I made for a St. Patrick's Day table. And it's a beautiful blue pot that I, I own, and I took, I bought some fresh shamrock in Callaway's Nursery, um, or you can get the red one, which is known as Oxalis, um, and that's the shamrock family. So here's your fresh shamrock and a little piece of driftwood. And by the way, folks, um, shamrock grows really, really well in um, Texas. I mean, I will plant this now after a week or so, and it'll, it's a perennial. It comes back year after year in my garden. I love it. It does? It does, wow. yeah. It grows well, beautifully in Texas. So um, here's a nice arrangement for the shamrock. But this leads me into what I want to talk about, which is, of course, the, the, the famous March 17th is all about St. Patrick. So March 17th is the anniversary of his death. So Patrick died in um, March, four, uh, March 17th, uh, 461 AD. And people don't realize, so what, what's all about the shamrock is the symbol of Ireland. First of all, shamrock's not the symbol of Ireland. I don't know if you know that. Shamrock was used by St. Patrick. And it was used, and I'm going to pick off a piece here, as you all know. Um, the, the three-leaf um, shamrock was used to tell the story of the Holy Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So it actually has religious significance. So we've all heard about St. Patrick banning the snakes out of Ireland, right? 
Well, we don't have any snakes in Ireland. We're, we weren't, we're not warm enough as a country to have snakes. Okay, there might be some, you know, the, the earthworm and some maybe garden variety here and there, but we don't have snakes. And we probably never did. But what most scholars believe, and is probably more apt, is that, that he used um, the uh, banning the snakes as banning paganism. So St. Patrick introduced Christianity into Ireland, and to do this, one of the things he used was the shamrock to tell the story of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then, of course, um, the snakes were just a symbol that he banned the snakes. The next thing I want to talk about was I was visiting last year, and I was going to Bally Walter Park in County Down with some clients. And on the drive, we, I decided we'd stop. We had time in, uh, in a place in, in County Down, and we stopped outside Down Cathedral. And I think we have an image of this, and this is where St. Patrick was actually buried. So he was buried um, in the grounds of St. of, not St. Patrick, St. Patrick was buried in the grounds of Down Cathedral. Now, Down Cathedral is actually Church of Ireland, and it's on the site of a Benedictine monastery. But that we should have a photo up for you now of St. Patrick's grave. Can you see that? Yeah, it is on stream, and I uh, have the cathedral uh, showing already. But let's go back to uh, the um, the grave. It's very interesting. Um, I don't know. I, it's not something that I expected to be like this. I thought it would be more um, kind of bigger. You thought it'd be more elaborate? Perhaps. Yeah. Did you hear when I said he died? He died in 461 AD. So it was pretty simple times. Right. But I, I don't know, <laughs> you know, through time and church does tend to create elaborate, I mean, just go to but Rome, right? Not only are those things simple. I mean, you think about it. I went to Nantucket not so long ago with my friend and we went for a walk out to the cliffs, uh, Sally and I. And I remember there's all these uh, railings and everything along these cliffs and signs saying that you couldn't pass them because, you know, if you fell over and died. And I was kind of laughing because in Ireland we don't have any of those because they feel if you fall off, it's your own fault. <laughs> and so we don't protect all of our stuff like that. You know, you don't, if you're going to walk to the edge of the cliff and throw yourself over, you're probably going to do it. Um, but, you know, the same with these sites, they're, they're protected but they encourage you to go visit them. Um, and so this is lovely. Do you know what this is near? I mean, for the golfers among us, there's a very, very famous golf club called Royal County Down, one of the top, top golf courses in the world. And that's really nearby. I think it's only about 24, 25 minutes from this cathedral, actually. So when oh, people very close. are going on a golfing trip and going to this part of Ireland, if you look at the map of Ireland, I did include a map of Ireland today to show, uh, to serve two, um, two functions. One is to show the location of Dromolan Castle and the other is to show the location of Royal County Down and Down Cathedral. So Down Cathedral is on the very, very northeast of Ireland. All right, if so you look at Dublin, you look at Belfast, uh, right up there you'll see uh, Down Cathedral. Um, There's two I have little, it like little with the pins. pin mark. You, should, you guys should be able to see that and um, that's where it is. So anyway, I just thought I'd give you a little uh, that was the little significance of the shamrock and St. Patrick. And then, I don't know if anybody's noticed recently, but I've got the blue plant pot. My logo is blue, it's always been blue, and I'm wearing this blue today. And everybody says, what's your obsession with blue, Rachel? Oh, right, the blue doors. And you're I about. love my blue doors. You know, I've got, <laughs> I've got photographs. Every time I go around Ireland, I take photographs outside blue doors, whether they're Georgian doors or barn doors or gates or, you know, anything that blue. Even the kitchen, in my kitchen, I had a stove uh, made in Pennsylvania with the cobalt blue or that sky blue, and I've loved it. And that's actually the color, that was our original color for Ireland before green. And that blue, St. Patrick actually wore blue vestments. Right, we do have a photo. And I have a photo, and it, it, in this photo, I kind of think it doesn't show the blue very well. It's sort of a pale bluey color. But he wore these blue vestments, hence it became St. Patrick's blue. And that blue then became, um, we had our, uh, the original flag that we had, the flag for Ireland, when Henry VIII, our friend Henry VIII was in, uh, in the throne, um, the flag was this beautiful color blue with a gold harp. And that actually is our, t to this day, that is still our presidential flag. Do we have a photograph of that Indeed, we flag? have that up right now. Oh, wait, yeah, the flag. Mm -hmm. So it's just blue with the gold harp. So the shamrock's not actually the symbol of Ireland. The shamrock is associated with St. Patrick's Day and the Holy Trinity. And the harp is actually the symbol for Ireland and is on this flag, this blue flag, and that's our presidential standard. Now, in Ireland, where our president, our president is President Michael D. Higgins, 
and he lives in a place called Orason Uktharon. Do you know what that actually means? That's it in Irish, but do you want to know what it means in English? Most it means certainly. the White House. The White House, okay. And here's a little tidbit. The White House, the White House in the United States of America was actually designed and built by an Irishman. Really? Yep, Ken Dowling from Kilkenny. So an Irishman built the White House. The contract was given to him by George Washington. So let's look again at that photo. So on And that if you look at the photograph of Oris, I don't think I have the photo of Oris Rootsman, but I have a photo of the, the gates with the right. two flags flying. Is that as far as you can, could get? Um, <laughs> well, I do have photos of Oris and Uthron, but I've kind of gone off tangent here. I'm not on script. I just remembered that little detail about the White House for you. Okey but um, And there's a whole story about why the White House is actually called the White House. Um, and why Ken Dowling did what he did, and it's a great story. And we don't talk about these stories in St. Patrick's Week. And I think they're very important because, you know, you talk about the hands that built America. Um, but the uh, flag, uh, when it's flying, it means that the president is in residence. And then the other flag is the green, white, and orange, which is the flag for Ireland. The green and the orange symbolize the two different uh, opposing uh, religions, and the white in between our parties is the symbol of peace between the two. So that's kind of a little bit of history on the flag, St. Patrick, the blue, the shamrock. And I thought I'd kind of put that into perspective a little bit um, because I think it's only fair that, that we do um, get this right for, for people's cultures and that. You know, I like to get it right for other people's just because I'm a bit of a history nerd anyway. So, uh, but that's, that's just me. So moving on, this I'm really excited about. I'm going to introduce you to a gentleman from who's in Ireland right now. And he is, I'm sitting in a studio in Dallas, Texas, off uh, the Dallas Tollway and Lyndon B. Johnson Freeway. For those in Ireland listening, it's 635, or LBJ as we call it, short for LBJ, Lyndon B. Johnson. So I'm sitting at the intersection of these two, and this gentleman is sitting in the drawing room Drum Drumoland Castle. So, hmm, lucky Mark. So he's the managing director, as I said, of Drumoland Castle, and his name is Mark Nolan. But before we connect with Mark and talk to him, I think it's only important that everybody has a quick look at this video of a function and life at Dromolan Castle. The music is this beautiful, mystical Irish music that we don't get enough of. We get the diddly eye stuff again for St. Patrick's Day, but this music is this lovely, haunting, magical music. And I think, um, you know what, I'm gonna stop talking. You, you guys have to just watch and see. And so let's, can we roll that video? And when you do, I will stop talking. amazing did you like that Anna I love that does it make you want to go back to Ireland uh, it does absolutely does okay. my god it was beautiful so I'm hoping the gods are with us and that the connections are going well and that we are now able to connect with Dromolan Castle and meet with Mark Nolan himself I think he is oh, good uh, good there. morning good afternoon uh, Rachel 
Well, good afternoon. Have we got him there on the screen? You've got him on the screen? I do. Oh. I'm just pulling that in your screen in one second. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, at least you know it's, it's working. And, oh, there he is. There is the man himself. And you are sitting, <laughs> like I said, in the drawing room. Is that correct, in, in Dremoland? That, that's correct, Rachel. Do you get the, can you get the fireplace behind us burning our estate timber? Oh. It's, a, it's, a cool, it's a cool evening here, but it's, it's, it's beautiful. As and always. You have, you, and I see that fireplace, like you said, in the background. Now, you mentioned that it's your estate timber. Is there an, an allotment? Do you have so much of it that you can burn? Or is there only so much that you can burn? Or how many no, acres well, we, have you got? No, but we usually stick to just fallen trees. But the nice thing we do is for every tree that falls, we plant 12. So there will be plenty more trees for future generations to come on the estate. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, I'm looking at that drawing room and I'm just wondering, and I, I'm pretty sure this is true, but can people enjoy afternoon tea and coffee there or is that just somewhere you can just sit and have your own cup of coffee or what, what can they do in this lovely drawing room, Mark? Well, our, our view is that our customers can do what, what they like within reason as long as it's legal in any of our public area rooms. But this, this is a lovely venue for morning coffee looking out over the estate and to the Temple of Mercury. And also we do lovely kind of family intimate dinners up to about 20 people here. So it's a, it's a fabulous and great versatile room. Oh, right. Now, I'm glad you mentioned the template Mercury. I'd like to take us back a little bit in time, if we may. And, um, you know, my knowledge of history is enough to be dangerous, but enough to be interested. And for those of us watching and listening, I think it's important to know that Dromolan Castle is just much more than this very special place as a castle to go and stay and that... But it was originally the stronghold, would that be correct, for Brian Baru, the High King of Ireland? That's correct, who lost his life in the Battle of Clontarf. And, and, uh, and actually, uh, the chief, sorry, we're crossing over, uh, Rachel, the chief of the O'Briens, Lord Inchiquin, still lives on the estate. Oh, he does? Yeah. Oh, he, lives, uh, he lives on the house, he lives in Tolmont House. And he comes down and he meets group of, groups of O'Briens that stay here from time to time. And he does guest lectures on O'Briens. And of course, in North America, there are thousands and thousands of O'Briens, which is wonderful. And it's wonderful when they come and visit us. That's wonderful information, Mark, because what you're saying then is for anybody who's watching who's got O'Brien in their family, it sounds like the, the, the seat or the root of the O'Brien family really hails from that part of the world. Absolutely, yeah. This is the stronghold. Right. So all you O'Briens out there, you need to get over to Dromolan Castle quickly. And could you tell us, you mentioned uh, looking over the grounds there from the drawing room, also that you're looking at the Template Mercury. Could you explain to us what the Template Mercury is, please? Well, the Template Mercury was, was built to honour a horse called Sean Wee uh, when the castle was in disrepair when it was privately owned by uh, Lord Inchiquin. He had a very good horse called Sean Bui, and he raced it. And the horse won the race. And to honor, uh, to honor the horse, he built the, the hermit's grave, of which the horse buried underneath it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So and he must salvage the castle and re-roof it on, the, on, on the, the many guineas he made from the, from the race. Ah. And the castle itself, um, it, it, to look at it, it looks... Parts of it look a little bit similar to Bunratty Castle. So is there a connection between Dromoland and Bunratty at all? Yes, there is. The, a similar, uh, same architect would have been involved in both properties. Uh, the, the, the castle here has been reinvented. We, we say that it's a, here since the fifth, 16th century of the 1550. And of course, the oldest part of the castle actually now is the Queen Anne Court, which were the original stables. Uh, associated with the castle they're converted now and they've just been renovated into luxury accommodations so the queen anne court you mentioned the lu luxury accommodations um if somebody was to go over and actually specifically request to stay at the queen anne court what would they expect to get could you describe what kind of accommodations is it a bedroom a suite self-catering what, what is it uh, oh no the, the these are it's it's a five-star property with all services uh, depending on what category room you booked in the Queen Anne Court, most of them have an ensuite sitting area, obviously all ensuite bathrooms and king size, all the amenities you'd expect of a five-star luxury resort. 
Ah, right, okay. So luxury accommodation, just uh, new ones. And r roughly how many bedrooms would you say you had at Dromolan Castle? We have 97 bedrooms. We've been renovating the castle for the last four years. It, the renovation finishes uh, on the 18th of April. We'll have the whole ho hotel will have been completely renovated and everything, but done very sympathetically to try and restore the old world feel. And in actual fact, most of the project has been about restoration, not kind of reinvention, if you like. And you say the word, I notice you say the word restoration, and I think that's important that I'd like people to, to hear from what I've noticed with certain properties ar around Ireland that are restoring. They're not just coming in and renovating, are they? They are bringing it back to its former glory and working with the right um, builders or craftsmen, craftspeople. Well, well, of course, this would be very much a listed building. So we've worked very successfully with the different agencies in Ireland. Some instances, it just goes to show you the detail in some instances that we haven't been able to replace glass uh, because of the age of the glass. Obviously, we'd love to you know, be able to replace all the glass, but also we, uh, you know, we're very empathetic to, the, to the, the request. We want to keep the old world charm of the castle and not lose any of its folkloric history, which is a very, part, very important part and a kind of a, a thing that we have that is nearly unique to a castle property in Ireland. And also, obviously, to have Lord H. Quinn still living on the estate, it gives a lot of authenticity to what we do. Well, that's fantastic. I hope some of my clients that are actually watching this or will be watching it later, they know who they are. Uh, they're actually scheduled. I, I can't name them out, but they're all scheduled to go stay with you uh, starting, I think, in June and September. So if they're watching, this is one of the places I'm sending to you guys. So hopefully you have a wonderful time. Good, good for you, Rachel. Just... Always let me know because we always try and personalize the experience, particularly if we know where they're coming. So we'll always do something nice, a small gesture. to. It's, it's uh, great to have you. our North American friends travel. No, that's fantastic. And what I'd like to, for you to talk to people about here who might be thinking of you know, planning their trips over to Ireland and staying in Drumoland, something that's kind of near and dear to my heart, and I mentioned this to you earlier on, OK, I'm a Cork woman. I don't have a bias one way or another about airports. Everybody thinks because I'm from Cork, I have something against Dublin Airport. I have nothing against any airport. But I just want to urge people to remember Shannon Airport. And Shannon Airport, in my opinion, is an incredibly efficient airport. I mean, there's nothing. And where the efficiency also comes in, I've noticed, Mark, is if you are hiring a car or getting in and out, I mean, it happens so quickly. And it reduces your wait time. And I know, uh, for example, is, uh, in a, a couple of weeks, I actually have American Airlines coming on the show to talk to us as guests. And we're going to talk about TSA and all those beautiful things. But um, if somebody was flying in or out of Shannon and they, I think they should stay in Dromoland, could you give me an idea of, like, say, how far would they be from Shannon? What could they do in the area? Maybe whatever you could add to this and tell our clients about Shannon and Dromoland yeah. and the area well, and the proximity, please. Well, Rachel, first of all, on the estate, we have our own 18-hole championship golf course. We have falconry, play target shooting, tennis courts, go-karts for cat, kids and family, swimming pools, all, all, the, all the amenities you'd expect. But also, we're right in the centre of the tourism part of Ireland. We have a wonderfully uh, done uh, uh, Bunratty Folk Park, which is a very nice, nicely done product. It's about 15 minutes away from us. We've got King John's Castle in Limerick. Uh, and uh, the Hunt Museum, which is a fabulous collection of artifacts going back to many years. And, of course, we're literally a stone's throw. Well, that's an, exa an Irish exaggeration from the Cliffs of Moher, which, as you know, is one of the iconic things that must be seen when somebody comes to Ireland. But we're right beside Shannon International Airport. We're 15 minutes away, so it makes life very easy. And for the first day, it's a great kickoff point to get your bearings, get comfortable, have a good night's sleep, and then head off on your exciting trip. And of course, the Wild Atlantic Way has been a huge addition to this region in terms of developing tourism, right the whole way down from Kerry up to Donegal. Now, something else you mentioned about staying there the first night and that uh, I've been, about two weeks ago, I was talking to people on this show. I'm trying to encourage people. It's what I call uh, stop speed dating with Ireland because um, I think because of where I live here now, what, 20 something years, and I understand vacation time is shorter and American guests on the whole might on average have a week, and I understand travel time, but if you're staying somewhere different every single night, it can get exhausting. So try and urge people, if you're going to a property like Dromoland, and I'm saying this off my own back, not because anybody's asked me to, or 
but I do believe strongly in uh, whether it's Ashford or Drumoland to try and stay two nights at least because it's it's I, it's not a property I urge people to use just as a bed and breakfast. You're, you're missing out on the grounds. You're missing out on, like you said, the falconry and all of the special experiences if you're, if you're just going to spend the night and go off early in the morning. You know, it'd be a shame to miss out on what Dromoland actually has to offer if you're, you know, so if you can stay two nights, that'd be great. Um, I was going to ask you uh, one more thing, um, which was about Mrs. White's afternoon tea. Um, you can have that because my clients love afternoon teas. Can they book them in advance? Can they do that in advance if they want yeah. to, or do they have to wait till they get there? No, I, in fact, we'd strongly recommend, particularly during the summer season, to book it in advance. It's become kind of an iconic piece of our of our fabric, and so a lot of people book in it in, it in advance. It, it's a one. It's a wonderful event. It's served in our drawing room with. Uh, huge waterfall crystal chandeliers, hand-woven Venetian silk on the walls, our resident pianist playing just beautiful melodies. It, it really is, and it's, it's a hugely popular thing. So for that reason alone, I really suggest when somebody's booking accommodation here, that they also book Mrs. White's afternoon tea. Okay, and I'm going to ask you one final question, Mark, before we have to finish yeah. up. Can you believe it's gone so quickly? But with St. Patrick's Day coming up, I wanted to ask you this. A, is there anything in particular you guys are doing at the castle? And B, to end on this very personal note for me, which is, as you know, and I know, the food scene in Ireland has been beyond elevated for many, many years now. And that message needs to be told over here in the United States on a larger scale. Uh, I think, is your chef, your executive chef, David McCann, I believe? Um, That's I right, yeah. About your food and do you source it locally uh, there from uh, Dromoland as best you can? Of course, as best you can, not yes. for everything. Yes, Rachel, just uh, we, we, we would make every effort to source local produce and we, we, we're literally weekly dealing with different suppliers. There are so many Irish suppliers producing such good foods. I, I was delighted at the earlier piece when you mentioned about the tradition of kind of bacon and cabbage, those traditional things which are off at their place and, you know, are wonderful things to eat. But there are so many other things to dine on in Ireland. The food standard and the service standards have just elevated, as you, as you said, beyond compare. And it's nice to hear that we need to get away from this kind of thing, idea that it's a beautiful country, but the food is not good. Food is superb in Ireland. And so it's, you know, I, I'm delighted to hear you dispel that kind of rumour that still abounds a little bit. And do, would you, you know, I know that uh, salmon is a specialty, smoked salmon in Ireland. I'm doing a segment tomorrow on TV for Fox. And a good friend of mine you might know, Nevin Maguire, gave me one of his recipes. So I'm going to oh, use yes, his yeah, recipe uh, tomorrow. But, um, of course, I don't have the Irish salmon. But would you source Irish salmon there at the castle? Yes, absolutely. And we, we have a local producer that smokes it uh, in the burn. So absolutely. Producer? And it's a great, great quality. Ah, Pardon? is it Brigitte Curtin from the Spurn Smokehouse? Yes, Brigitte would be Brigitte would be an excellent supplier to us. We would deal with a few suppliers, but Brigitte is really an exceptional supplier of smoked salmon. Ah, for those of you who know me, I'm always talking about the Burn Smokehouse salmon. And of course, I won't go on, but I have a thing about the Burn perfumery, and there's a wonderful gentleman in, in the Burn called Dr. Brendan Dunford. And I've taken people on uh, these food tours and we'll go and study the old Follox Fias in, in the Burren and the early Irish food and then bring it modern day. So it's really nice. But I urge people to eat the food in these places because I I'm challenging people, but it's right up there with, you know, Italian and French cuisine now um, in, in Ireland. It's, it's spectacular and we owe it to uh, strongly to, I've said this again and again, hoteliers, producers, cafe owners, pub owners, chefs, we owe to all of them for the work that they've been doing for years and years now to do it justice. And anywhere I can, I have to stop talking about this green beer and, and cabbage thing. And like you said, I have nothing against a good piece of bacon and cabbage. Um, but it's just that that's the only thing we get again and again. And, and, and there was imagery running, wasn't there, Anna, of uh, the food at Dromoland throughout this? So people might have seen those beautiful yes. imageries. And did you see their desserts, the delicacies that they oh were my gosh, they serving? They look amazing. Incredible. And that's all at the hands of uh, their chef, David McCann. So we have to check them out. So listen, I wanted to say a very big thank you to Mark and to all of the staff there at Dromolan Castle and wish you all a very, very good and safe St. Patrick's Day. Do you have any plans this weekend, Mark, or the castle have any plans? Well, it's uh, I'd have to be honest and say it's a big rugby weekend. 
uh, because, of course, Ireland are playing Wales on the Saturday. But Sunday, Sunday we have lots of plans. We'll be greening the castle, three pints of Guinness to our residents, and a few other nice things. So if you're in the area and you haven't got a bed, we'll, we, we'll fix you up, and we'd love to see you here over the, over the weekend. And, of course, oh. Monday being a bank holiday this weekend, so we're, 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 we'll certainly drown, drown the shamrock. <laughs> and so can we see photos of the of Dermolan being greened? Will they share those on social media platforms, Dermolan Castle? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We, we certainly shall, yeah. Okay, so I'll tell people to follow on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all those. We'll put a post up. Can, Anna, can we put up a link to Dermolan's, all of their social media pages? We sh yes, we will. And people can look out for the greening because I think that's lovely. So again, Mark, thanks a million for joining us and uh, wishing you all um, a very safe and lovely weekend. A pleasure and it's best of wishes to all your customers, your listeners and watchers. And we'd love to welcome you to Demoland. It is a special place. Okay, thank you. Okay, Anna. So I would like to know what are you doing this St. Patrick's Day? What am I doing this St. Patrick's Day? I'm actually taking a rest on um, St. Patrick's Day because the week leading up to it for me is almost like a, uh, my Super Bowl. Um, oh, tomorrow I'm doing, I'm on, gosh, what am I talking about? Tomorrow morning I'm on Fox 4 Good Day with uh, Tim and I forget the other lady's name, she's gone. So I'm doing an Irish smoked salmon tomorrow morning. On Friday morning I'm on Good Morning Texas and I'm doing something with Jane McGarry and I'll be cooking something up there and talking about St. Patrick's Day traditions. And then on Friday afternoon I'm doing a radio show with Brian Glenn. I think his show is called In the Know mm -hmm. and it's on 6.20 a.m. or something like that. Wow. I will have luck. So, you know, I've got busy, TV. Busy times. TV and radio. Busy time, yeah, for me. So, and then the St. Patrick's Day Parade is on Greenville Avenue on Saturday, which I normally don't attend. But this year I'm going to go because one of our best friends, he actually founded the parade, Tom Stevenson. No way. Okay. Yeah, he's, That's exciting. Uh, Tom and Sally Stevenson. So he's got a float um, in honor of him. Um, so his family and friends are all going to be on the float. So I'll be there um, having some fun. So sure, why oh. not? Gosh, okay yeah, then yeah. people must know exactly what to tell you not show up with any any i'm afraid i probably have to wear the green or something <laughs> on saint patrick's day i'm not a killjoy and that's the thing is i have nothing against saint patrick's day or having a great time i just want the balance of the information Facts. that's all so. mm -hmm. i get it I okay get then it. well for now that's it i'm going to sign out and we'll have a new show next week lots of exciting things coming up i say that every week exciting but there will be they i'm are. going to be interviewing some irish chefs we've got nevin mcguire catherine fulvio coming on the show and then don't forget to watch lords and ladles and then i've got joe brown from joe brown um cosmetics coming on and we're going to be talking about her products um so stay tuned and thank you everybody for watching Law Fela Podrick, August, y'all. Bye bye, y'all.